What was the point of the bomb? Isn't that obvious? I wanted to dispose of Legrand as spectacularly as possible. You almost disposed of me as well. Did I not tell you to deliver the letter and leave immediately? People could have died. But of course, that was the point of the bomb. I don't want to hurt anyone. You know that. And you know that I don't care what you want. Obey my orders and nothing will happen to you, and you'll soon be a rich man. I won't blindly obey orders anymore. I want to know what the plan is. You know as much as you need to know. We will steal the second eye in Cairo before the eyes of the world. The theft of the first eye got everyone's attention. Legrand's death would have increased the excitement immeasurably, but this will do just as well. We'll have a showdown instead. The Raven versus the Inspector. That should also electrify the press. Why are you doing this? I thought it was about the jewels. Why are we making life difficult for ourselves and attracting so much attention? It's about more than that. It's about performing on the greatest stage of all. About the end of a legend. You'll see when it's time for you to see. Until then, just do as I say. And what if I just leave? You knew who you were dealing with the whole time. I don't have time for your hypocrisy. You always knew who you were dealing with. If, for your peace of mind, you have to pretend to be innocent in this situation, so be it. But we both know that you begged me to let you in on the heist. And in this business, one must get one's hands dirty. But James! James! Where on earth are you? During the trip, we'll keep a low profile and steer clear of the ground. I, uh... I lost the ticket and the fake passport. I swear, if my arm was still good enough to climb, I'd have disposed of you long ago. Oh, well. I'd prefer that no one see you while you're on board. Smuggle yourself on board and stay under cover until Cairo. Okay. And no more games. Nothing that Legrand, the police, or anyone else could do to you compares to what I will do to you if you don't follow my plan. James, there you are. Is the inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? He thinks he knows me. He thinks I'm stupid and weak. I have him right where I want him. Here's a young thief who'll show an old timer how it's done. Even if it means a bit of solitary confinement. Lying on a pile of clothes. Huh. Different fabrics. Some rougher, some softer. This one feels like a fine net. No, I don't think this will be much use. I hope the dock workers have left the cargo hold. I'd better just take a peek. Or at least I'd take a peek if it were possible to open it. Huh. Feels like metal. Angular. I think it's the trunk lock. There are small round bumps with slots in the middle. Could be screws. You probably have to pull a handle to unlock the trunk from the outside. No one thought about making it possible to open from the inside. Okay, where's the screwdriver? Uh, ha, knife. Uh, there's the screwdriver. So, if I just turn this... Uh, aha! Oh, you're kidding me! Seems to be a strap for holding something on the shelf above the trunk. <sighs> Unfortunately, I can't reach the clasp. It's fastened tightly, and I can't reach the clasp. A 
robust strap with a metal clasp. The stuff over there doesn't look like it was recently loaded. Probably part of the ship's inventory. Oh, brilliant! Hopefully the clasp won't slip out of the box when I pull the strap. The pipe rolled up against the shelf, but it's still out of my reach. How's that supposed to work? The strap won't tie itself around the pipe. Hmm. All right then, I'll just drive the blade through the end of the strap. Hmm. It's worth a try. Ta-da! That should hold. Two metal pipes, stable, about 10 meters apart. My best chance. Steady as a rock. Elegance. Oh, great. Okay, I'll tie him up and then get out of here before they start looking for him. And I already have an idea where I can hide. I can't imagine that with such grief. Yeah, and without saying goodbye either. <gasps> no need to be frightened, young lady. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. This is hardly the time or the place. What happened on the train? Nothing, nothing bad. Everyone is fine. Inch is dangerous, I warned you. I know, that's why we're being careful. And you have a smart and handsome young thief at your side. And humble too. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. What have I done to deserve luck like this? Inch bothers me. He's shown what he's capable of. What if he finds out about our plan? How would he? We're careful. He's more ruthless than we expected. The bomb on the train... I don't want to think about it. We need to make sure that we stay calm. You mean that I stay calm? I'm not worried about you. I know you. Shall we go over the plan one more time? Good idea. We know that Inch hid the first eye in the Baroness's luggage. I'll break into her cabin and replace the eye with a fake. Right. We'll steal the second eye in Cairo. And Inch will be caught in the act. <laughs> it's simple. The devil is in the detail. I have to get into the Baroness's cabin undetected, then find the secret hiding place, and I can't leave any evidence behind. Yes. And Inch said something about a combination. So the hiding place might be locked. One step at a time. 
I think I'll assess the situation first. And I think I'll make myself comfortable for a little while. So this is how married life will be. Works for me. Everything went according to plan in London? Except for the explosion, yes. The Bobby was right on time. Because he had a good tip-off. I had enough time to take the eye, but unfortunately there was no time to replace it with the fake. Where is it? A work of art. Almost as beautiful as the original. I can't tell the difference. Inch could. But if all goes to plan, he won't have a chance to take a closer look at the jewel until after the burglary at the Egyptian Museum. Will the Grand cause any trouble? Everything's still going according to plan. That means he's clever, but not clever enough. And the Bobby? Peasant's cunning, nothing more. He won't be able to solve the puzzle on his own. There's still Inch. He doesn't suspect anything. We laid the foundation well. I've been his assistant for months already. He doesn't trust me. But he thinks he can play me for a sucker. That's enough. Speaking of Inch, I saw him talking to you in Venice. What was it about? He was angry because his attack on the train failed and because I lost my ticket. How did you get on the ship? As a stowaway, locked in a cold, dark cargo hold. Poor boy. I'll go out now and lead the police and master thieves around by the nose. I can think of something else to do. I can't. I have no idea where Inch had the fake jewel made, but it's amazing. Even someone with as much experience as I have has to look twice before realizing it's a fake. I'm sure I could help you if... Stand aside! If you told me what you're looking for. Well, you're just getting in my way! Now get out! I'll wait at the door, madam. Yes, yes! Oh, miss... Mayors, can I help you? No, I'm just having a look around the ship. Good day. Oh, that was close. Practicality was definitely placed ahead of design here. I guess the Lydia regularly docks at harbors that don't have their own gangways. And rather than make the passengers climb ladders, they opted for the less beautiful alternative. Two handsome sailors are standing at the table and studying a marine map. Good thing they're busy. I can have a look around without being disturbed. If someone leaves the bridge, I'll pretend to be stargazing. And if that doesn't work, I'll just turn on the charm. Hmm. A classic. The thief enters through the ventilation shaft. Can it really be that easy? No, it can't. The cover is screwed shut. Hmm. 
no idea what kind of flag this is. But the pole it's attached to could be very useful one day. It's about 80 centimeters long and looks quite stable. Yes, it's sturdy, but it's also too cumbersome to carry around. All the first-class cabins have their own ventilation. The shaft might be my best point of entry, but unfortunately... The cover is screwed shut. The poster proudly announces the ship's first Atlantic crossing. The city of New York welcomes the MS Lydia. The silhouette of New York and of a ship, but not of this one. They probably use the same template for every ship. Looks pretty official with a coat of arms, flag, seal, and all the trappings. And the poster is clean as a whistle. Someone seems to cherish it. The silhouette of New York and of a ship looks pretty official with a coat of arms, flag, seal and all the trappings. And the poster is clean as a whistle. Someone seems to cherish it. Inch is intelligent and ruthless, a dangerous combination. He's not a brilliant planner, but he is smart and careful. He senses danger. I'm afraid he might suspect that something is wrong. I think he's frightening. You look in his face and you'd believe that he's at peace with the world in himself. But Adil told me about his moon swings. From one moment to the next, the mask falls away and he's capable of anything. No use worrying about him now. I have a job to do. No use worrying about him now. I have a job to do. Very fine handiwork. The model maker even wrote the name of the ship on the tiny life preservers. But the winter garden at the back of the saloon is missing. And the stern deck looks different. It was obviously made before the ship was remodeled. Maybe one of the crew whiled away the long nights at sea building the model. Only someone with a lot of time and a love of the original could build such a thing. Several journals and magazines. Ah, huh, this looks pretty interesting. Art and culture today. Huh, there's something about the exhibition. Unique masterpieces exhibited for the first time together in their home country. Tireless efforts of Baroness von Trebitz. The only regular event seems to be the nightly drink in the saloon. Judging from the rest of the entertainment program, it seems necessary. Come in. How can I help you, young lady? Are you the ship's doctor? Uh, yes. Of course. You see, that's what I thought, because you've got a uniform and you work in the medical center. Well spotted, young lady. My name is Dr. Gebhardt. How can I help you? What are the other passengers like? Mm, listen, young lady, I, I do not really have time to chat right now. Today is my first day and it is going mm, differently than I had expected. You do seem a little stressed. Maybe you should relax. Stress isn't good for you. <laughs> you're, you're right. 
If there is nothing else I can help you with. But you weren't really helpful at all. Maybe I'll come back later. Bye now. We briefly discussed whether we should try to steal the second eye here on the ship. The lack of escape routes and the 10 centimeter thick door to the safe settled the question. Legrand is an important part of our plan. He's the one who'll arrest Inch in the end, but there's still a lot to do before that happens. No use worrying about him now. I have a job to do. Would it be okay for you if I get some fresh air up on deck? Of course, my dear. Give my regards to the sea. Wooden salad tongs, just small enough to carry around unseen. I'm not an expert, but I think that Mr. Kreutzer really is a very skilled violinist. At least, I liked it, and the captain was certainly smitten. Excuse me, gentlemen. She can't have meant you, Mr. Kreutzer. Why don't you just let me have a conversation with the young lady? I, I, I just wanted... Did you count the rings on your fingers, my dear? I think I'm going to stretch my legs. But, Mr. Kreutzer, please stay. You simply must tell me more about your wonderful violin. <sighs> if you insist. There seems to be tension between the violinist and the writer. I'd better not get involved. A wonderful concert, wasn't it? I wouldn't have expected you to be a connoisseur of classical music. Because I'm American? Because you're young, and friendly, and radiant. Someone like you doesn't have to know a lot to get along well in life. Are you easily prejudiced at your age? In my long experience, there's often a core of truth at the center of every prejudice. Prejudice is the reason of fools. Was that written in the book you once read? Oh, I've read many books. Good books. But not my books, you mean to say. You're a writer? Mm hmm What can I do for you, Miss... Mayors. You know, I'm not planning on throwing myself at a man. I'm glad to hear it. You have to work. Earn your own money. Oh, I will. My grades are excellent, and I really want to study acting in New York. None of my books has ever been made into a good film. The stories were twisted, shortened, and simplified so that even the dimmest fellow could follow them. I want to do theater and travel. I speak three languages. That would be three more than most people your age can speak. Do what you have to do, but stay away from bad men. Is this your first trip on the Lydia? That's quite enough. Life is too short for conversations like this. I do wish that rather delightful Swiss policeman had come along. I heard you had an interesting trip on the train. It was thrilling. I'm hoping for an encore. Perhaps in Cairo. Mr. Kreutzer possesses impressive technique, don't you think? He certainly does. His numerous playmates in Austria can tell you more about it than I. You mean... Mr. Kreutzer is a womanizer? I'm not talking about cheap skirts. I'm talking about expensive clothes. A man like him needs funds to support his lifestyle. Just go over to him, my dear. Tell the maestro that your family is wealthy. You have everything he's looking for. Money and a pretty face. Hold your tongue. Mr. Kreutzer, Lady Westmacott, please. 
Or did you have your eye on me, Mr. Kreutzer? Old, yes, but rich. Jezebel. Mr. Kreutzer, maestro. That's better, freeloader. You and Mr. Kreutzer, you seem to know each other. Not really, but I know his type. Parasites who cling to the rich and famous and suck them dry. The young, misunderstood painter. The innovative writer who writes books that no one wants to read. The musical talent that has to be supported. The ladies and gentlemen of high society let the others use them and call themselves patrons. Another word for fool. Didn't you finance archaeological excavations in the Near East and Egypt? For my husband, and I was there myself. I catalogued items for him, and I didn't show him off like a trophy at cocktail parties. But my son was one of them, the worst kind. The kind that sucks not only the money, but also the life right out of a person. May I take my leave? You may. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain for a role model, and that they stay sober for the rest of the trip. He's sweating I hope the crew doesn't take... Ah, oh, lovely big towel. I hope tomorrow I'll have a chance to sunbathe and enjoy the rest of the trip. A deck chair in the sunshine on a cruise ship. I'd be a fool to miss out on that tomorrow, but I have to take care of my duties before I can relax in the sun. A handsome man and a talented musician, but he doesn't seem very happy. Hello, Mr. Kreutzer. Do you want to have a go at me, like the old witch in there? I just wanted to talk to you. Now is not the best time. I just wanted to tell you that I really loved your music, and that Lady Westmacott did not have the right to speak to you like that. Really? How do you know? You don't know me. Then, did she have the right? No, she didn't. That cynical old witch enjoys exposing the weaknesses of others, although we all have them. She as well. She lusts for recognition and acts as though it weren't so disgraceful. She rejects prizes and awards with snide remarks, but she's angry when others receive them. She needs to know that she's better than others. You seem to know her quite well. I've only met her once or twice, but I know her son and some of her friends. One friend of hers supported me for a long time. No one is brave enough to say it to her face, but everyone hates her. Her or her success? You're so talented. Why aren't you performing on the world's great stages? Fate, perhaps. Or bad luck. My parents opened every door for me and my sister and expected corresponding careers. Overambitious parents who force their children to play music? No, it wasn't like that. I loved it. I loved to play the violin. They didn't have to force me. I wanted to do it on my own. I thought I would achieve my goals if only I worked hard enough. But it was not to be. What happened? In a more dramatic story, I'd say that I broke my hand just before my big break. Or that I was rejected because of my nationality or my name. Or that I was brought down by a conspiracy. But nothing like that ever happened. I practiced like mad. Got better and better. Really good. But nothing happened. The right people never heard me. I was never in the right place at the right time. 
Can you imagine how it feels to always be on the cusp of a breakthrough? To be just one evening away from becoming an overnight sensation? To see how other, less talented violinists pass you by because you just aren't lucky enough? How terrible. For every star in the limelight, there are a dozen more that burn out unseen, fading month by month. I didn't want to be one of those people who waste their lives chasing dreams without realizing that they're unattainable. If I couldn't have the life that I always dreamt of, and that my family expected from me, then at least I could have the next best life. The next best life? Mansions, limousines, parties. Everything you could wish for. Though none of it belongs to me. The lady called you a freeloader. <laughs> An ugly word. But maybe not so far from the truth. I move with the rich and famous, and at first glance, I live exactly the life my father always wished for me. A carefree life, easy going. And I play the violin, which I always loved to do. But it's not really like that. It's empty. My life is just a shell. A show, and everyone knows it. I loved something once, and I burned for it. But now, the violin is just an accessory for practicing my real profession. And your family? How could I ever look them in the eyes? A failed violinist who gave up. What does the future hold for you? Isn't it obvious? My hands are starting to shake from alcohol. What will be left once I lose my good looks? I'll have nothing then. And so I'll put an end to it all. You can't say things like that. With my father's pistol. I always have it with me. It... It's gone! <laughs> Fate won't even grant me a quick death. Don't you think you can still make it? No. It's too late now. The real question is... Did I give up too quickly back then? I don't know. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, Mr. Kreutzer. He has the enviable talent of being able to sleep anywhere, anytime. He once fell asleep on a cable car and only woke up after he'd already gone up the mountain and back down again. It happened pretty fast between us. It was magic when we first met. Birds of a feather flock together, and he can be very charming. Daddy wasn't at all amused when I brought him home, mind, but I don't think he'd have been satisfied with anyone. I don't like wearing hats, but they do fit the role. And I have to admit that the day in London when we shopped for Patricia Mayers was a lot of fun. Normally, I don't carry so many things around, but it would have been suspicious if I'd come aboard with nothing but a rucksack whilst pretending to be the daughter of a wealthy family. I got this necklace from my father. It's supposed to remind me that money isn't the most important thing in life. If all you've got is this penny, as well as family and friends, then you're a very rich girl, he said. I'll take it with me. It'll bring me luck. I got this necklace from my father. If all you've got is the... We booked this cabin because it's centrally located. Easy to duck in whenever we need to. Of course, the fact that it's a first-class cabin with a huge bathroom and shower had nothing to do with it. As soon as I've swapped the jewels, I'll treat myself to a hot shower, and then we'll see how the evening progresses. As soon as I've swapped the jewels, I'll treat myself to a hot shower, and then we'll see how the evening progresses.
I always try to carry as few personal items as possible. If my things are ever searched, they won't reveal my true identity. be the right size. The penny fits perfectly into the screw slot, but my fingers aren't strong enough to turn the screw. That's it. I can jam the penny in and make an improvised screwdriver. It. I just hope that this is the right shaft. Hmm. I could tie the bath towel around the pole, put the pole across the ventilation shaft, and climb down with the help of the towel. Sounds like a plan. Here goes nothing. Ah, Jakob Aust. I finally got you. I'll have them arrest you and justice will be done. Can I be of assistance, madam? Yes! You can get out of the way. Shall I tidy up, madam? No! It's time to celebrate. Excellent. The coast is clear. It seems like she was searching for a specific photo, and that she actually found it. Jakob Aust. Now I've got you, she said. We got our hands on the list of passengers, but I don't recognize the name. Hundreds of black and white photos, many of them tinted. From the 20s and 30s, I guess. Oh, I don't have time to deal with them. The Baroness wrote something down and took the slip of paper with her. Oh, it's probably not important. Impressive for a quick drink on the go. Gin, whiskey, liqueur, sherry, vodka, brandy, and champagne. Every bottle is at least half empty. I wonder what the Baroness is running away from. Loneliness, disappointment, grief. Napkins and towels, but no jewel. Corkscrew, bottle opener, coaster, nothing else. What's that? A small leather strap. Aha! To me, it looks like a combination lock. A good one, too. The door only opens when the right symbols are in place. 
There are outlines of animals. A dog, a cat, a bear, and a rooster, amongst others. Eight symbols per cylinder. That means more than 4,000 possible combinations. Hmm. Nefertiti, Guernica, A.D., Buonarotti's Adam. This could be a memory aid for the Baroness. And it would explain how Inch discovered the combination. I'm going to copy the hints. Hmm. As I see it, I have to decipher these clues to find three of the symbols. Then I can guess the fourth. Well, Nefertiti was an Egyptian queen. The monogram and the two other clues aren't much help. I've copied the hints into my diary. Maybe someone on board can help me to figure out at least three of the four symbols. I'd put money on the eye of the Sphinx being behind this door. I don't think anyone would bet against me. I'm sure that the eye is in the Baroness's luggage. Not even Adil would believe that this painting was an original. He was interested in art when we first met. But for him, it was always about the content, not the technique. I had my work cut out, teaching him to concentrate on the stroke, the material, and the signature of the artist. It's the only way to distinguish an original from a fake. I don't care who painted it as long as it speaks to me, he said. A perspective that, as an art thief, I can't share, but it's charming nonetheless. The mannequin could probably wear my clothes. It'd disappear under the Baroness's clothes, though. As a child, I often stood in front of shop windows and tried to stand as still as the mannequins. But when I got bored, I claimed that one of the mannequins had blinked and declared myself the winner. I'd prefer to lock the door. Someone could come in and catch me at any moment. But it's important not to leave a trace. Inch absolutely cannot find out about us. I must hurry. steward who checked whether everything was ready for the Baroness's nightly rest. Whoever it was, I should leave as fast as possible before someone comes back. What on earth is going on here? I don't like that. Is someone else after the eye as well? But even if that is the case, what does the audio tape have to do with it? I can't let it get to me. I have a job to do. It seems like Dr. Gebhardt was able to wrestle himself away from his work, but he still doesn't seem to be very relaxed. Quite the opposite. And why won't he go to the saloon? A deal? In the shower. 
I found the secret compartment. Oh, brilliant. And the jewel? I'm working on it. A deal? Yes. I almost got caught in the Baroness's cabin. What happened? I don't know. A man came in and I just had time to hide under the bed. Maybe it was a steward who came to clean the cabin? And turn on a tape recorder in the cupboard? Huh. Maybe it was Inch. He wanted some music? There was nothing on the tape. It was playing, but I didn't hear anything. Something is rotten here. Don't bother your pretty little head about it. Swap the eye and hurry back. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> I don't think your surprise will really surprise me. The secret compartment is secured with a combination lock. Is there any way in? Not without leaving evidence. I need the combination. Huh. Are there any hints? A memory aid, consisting of several works of art. There are animals on the lock. Hmm. Huh. The works of art might hint at specific animals. Yes, I think so too. About the combination... Yes? Does Nefertiti mean anything to you? Mm, an Egyptian queen. That's it. I didn't have an affair with her, if that's what you mean. She's not my type, and she's been dead for thousands of years. Well then, I'll take your word for it. Guernica. Sounds Spanish, doesn't it? Yes, it's a city in the Basque region. Does it have a heraldic animal? Or maybe the region has one? I don't know. I've, I've never been there. I just know it because the city was bombed by the Nazis during the Spanish Civil War. Nazis? In the Spanish Civil War? Well, not officially, of course. At the request of General Franco, his friends from Germany reduced a defenseless city to ashes and rubble. Picasso immortalized the bombing in his famous painting. Really? Is it on display in Spain? Silly. As long as Franco is in charge, he won't allow that. Where is it? Ah, oh, no idea. Paris, maybe? Picasso lived there for a long time. Hmm. Maybe doesn't help me much. Does the monogram A.D. mean anything to you? Anno Domini? No, it can't be that. I think it stands for a name. Uh, nope, no idea, sorry. Buonarotti's Adam. Who's that? Buonarotti, um, seems familiar somehow. To me as well, but I don't know why. Hmm. No, I have no idea. I don't know him. Someone must. I'll be going. Don't waste all the hot water. Never. Dr. Gephardt, getting some fresh air? Oh, you could say that. Do you know the Egyptian queen, Nefertiti? Uh, yes. There is a famous bust of her. Really? Tell me more. No, I, I am sorry. I, I do not have time for that. Have you ever heard of a Picasso? That's enough. I am saying this as politely as I can. Please leave me alone now. We can discuss these unimportant things tomorrow, if it is really necessary. Do you know what the monogram A.D. stands for? What? A capital A with a small D below it. Yes, I do. Will you leave me alone if I tell you what it means? You know. It is not just any monogram. It is the first. Albrecht Dürer, a German artist, signed all his works with it. He was the first artist to sign all of his work with a monogram. It was not common to do so before then. Are you sure? His wooden engravings were, and still are, printed billions of times in Germany. Billions of times? You're exaggerating. Not at all. His work appears on German marks. And what? That's enough. I told you what you wanted to know. Please, leave me alone now. Dr. Gebhardt? Yes. Buonarotti. No idea. Don't know him. But... Try your luck somewhere else and leave me alone, please. Thank you. I ought to be going. Thank God. Strange guy. I wonder what or who he's watching in the saloon. He seems like he's waiting for something, and he's growing more nervous by the minute. Strange... I wonder what he seems like he...
Hmm, maybe the art magazine will help me with the symbols. Indeed. An article about the different works of art and how they survived the Second World War. And there's also a picture of the bust of Nefertiti. The unique Egyptian work of art was... 1913. Hmm. Hmm. Permission to export to Germany. Second World War. Safe at the Reich Bank. Then a bunker. And then a salt mine. Prevented from shipping the bus to the United States. Back in Berlin since 1956. Very glad. Blah, blah, blah. Soon in the Egyptian Museum of Berlin and hopefully someday in a reunified Berlin on the museum island. Okay, so the bust of Nefertiti is located in Berlin. Hmm. Berlin. Berlin. The bear. The Berlin bear. There's a bear on Berlin's coat of arms. Nefertiti, bear. That's it. I have to find out where the other works of art are located and which animals are associated with those cities. Now I know what to look for, it'll be child's play.